Is it worth it in your quest to find the one piece to spend your long hard spent hours on the sim grinding out ranked non ranked whatever it might be to become a better player? I mean, those are the questions that I want to answer today coming from this tweet by uh, Jensuko 999. I thought it was a very interesting topic to be brought up. I think there's a lot of misconceptions and I want to bring my perspective as a longtime magic player that has had experience with online digital platforms, although those being more official, which I will touch on and just really provide you a all-inclusive final conclusion as to whether or not the sim is worth your time as an average one piece player and heck even as a maybe more pro player as well oh, timestamps down below and of course if you want to see more videos like this i want you to leave a like on the video and comment down below what you want to see me talk about let's talk about the one piece tcg sim and the first point that i want to bring up is the fact that the sim is well online it's not paper it's not in person you may not actually feel the isms of playing in paper and you're right there are some differences right and and it's really about that feel going there and and shuffling your deck properly randomizing it and getting to make tells off of what your opponent is doing and playing out physical cards, checking your triggers properly. These are some of the things that you may not be able to do on the sim because it does it for you being online, but you will be able to do in paper. You are forced to do this. And especially when it comes to playing the order of certain effects, making sure effects resolve properly. This is also a second point of certain cards have orders in which they do things. And especially in a competitive environment, I, I'm thinking of something like as a Nami player, I have effects like a Usopp's rubber band trigger that draws you a card, then mills a card, which is very important in terms of the order, especially if you stack the top of your deck off of something like a desert spot of the order is going to matter there in terms of resolution and that's not only going to matter for you but also matter for the opponent uh coming against you you don't want to be making that a mistake especially if you resolve it differently between two different rubber bands this is the type of thing that the sim takes care of you may not be actively aware of but when it comes to paper practice you have to make sure that you kind of at least goldfish your deck and run through it just even with yourself to make sure these things are resolving properly over time now that's that in terms of paper feel and in terms of triggers but another thing that also happens is honestly silly misclicks now this i think honestly at the end of the day this is a skill issue i, I just hot take if you misclick on the sim and use this as an example of um kind of a reason why the sim isn't good practice that's a skill issue i, I need to be honest you suck i just i, I don't i don't look I, i'm just gonna tear the band-aid off okay like these things happen and they also happen in paper just like as much as you you know make mistakes in paper you put the wrong card down or you you kind of play the wrong card from your hand like oops i didn't mean to play that card like that happens too it may not happen that often you of course are in person it's more tactile you're more i guess in the zone it's less passive but it still happens okay misclicking is a skill issue i personally don't think that's a real concern it happens and of course because it's on the same you can just leave you can just go away and that's what leads me to my next point. The sim is great for you to just get quick games in and out. It helps you stay in the zone of one piece because in terms of accessibility, not a lot of folks have time to be going out to their local game store and playing that much. Just going to the local game store and playing four rounds of one piece isn't that much. But when it comes to playing out like a full 30 minute round in paper, it's very different when playing out a game on the sim, especially as a Nami player. I know that my games can go really long in paper. They can go heck up to like 20, 25 minutes especially if it's grindy and you're thinking. But on the sim, since a lot of things are done for you, games can be as short as like 10, 15 minutes. Heck, even shorter than that. I played some speed games and I played some long games. So I think in terms of average time spent playing the game, the number of games, the number of reps you get, this is a big bonus for playing on the sim. You definitely want to get there. In, in terms of just average games, getting exposure to the decks that you're seeing. And of course, in terms of exposure, that brings me to my next point of, you know, you get a lot of randomness on the sim. Let's be honest, the amount of players that you're getting on the sim is really a, just a wide swath. You get a whole lot of new players that don't even know that you can go to settings and like automatically draw and set your dawn. They don't even know that. And you get like the super hard sweaty players that like create lobbies and they put the brackets in. They're like Sokka and Moria only. You know, you have the people that really use the sim for their intended training purposes. And you, you have all of this, right? It exists and it's really going to be that wide spot in the unranked lobby that's what it's for right it's for you to just get out there get exposed play into the wide match heck the other day i played this uh, against this red zoro player that i thought was going to play like traditional aggro but they were playing like some chopper animal kingdom build and i'm like what 
it's just, it, it, it just like I guess it's entertaining as a video, but it's really not entertaining as practice. So I will admit that in terms of the randomness, you're not getting a lot of practice. But in terms of that, I will also say that the ranked sim is also then there for a reason. Right now we have good integration with OP Bounty on the sim as well. So you have integrated rank system on there. So you can then go for a higher quality of player there as well. And I would expect to honestly see a similar spread of that type of player in an average tournament or a higher power kind of uh, locals or whatever it might be you're going to get that spread on the rank so you can choose to then test out meme brews which you can't really do at a local game store Heck, again four rounds over like two three hours whatever it might be that's not good efficient testing get your meme brew out on the sim you could get four games of one piece in like 40 minutes i'm telling you it's super quick heck if a game goes bad just quit and leave and do it again you could get so many games in in terms of reps if you wanted to mulligan a deck out you can do that on there with the uh just kind of gold fishing area you could just play out the game in the first couple of turns leave do it again do it again do it again I, and i wouldn't really promote this obviously there's a lot of other opponents out there that are using up their time to play these games i'd highly recommend you just again complete your games if you need to leave you need to leave and that's the great part about it just from a pure testing per game amount of of reps you get in perspective i think this sim genuinely wins out over the fact that you get a lower average lower quality of players because it's just going to be an open wide matchmaking it's whatever you pick and the fact that the deck building might not be as high up there you get some misclicks in there which again i think is a bit of a skill issue and the fact that again you just get in faster games you can play your test brews at a more efficient level and this just allows you to really test those really niche options that you have instead of just going out on locals and you never see that one or two cards that you added into your deck list that you're really excited about from the new starter deck you never might get that but on the sim you get to play so many games that you could just leave and play again and play again until you get those deck lists out and i think that's what's really important about that sim practice it's really valuable to just be playing these raw games over and over and over again and i get it from an average perspective you need to do both but i think that's the key you not only just need to be playing in paper for the feel playing your deck out learning its triggers sequencing things correctly and just understanding the whole tournament structure where to sit how time rounds work and just kind of working with in tournament stress that's fine but you also need to be as a non-competitive player and as a competitive player testing out your brews your one ofs and just how cards play out how certain scenarios play out you need to be doing that on the sim because you get to do that at a super high frequency at a really just honestly high variance level which is important because you also need to understand when you're uh, playing against a player that might not be as skilled you need to know what to do when your opponent misplays and when they play perfectly because i think a lot of folks concentrate too much on the fact that what do i do when my opponent plays perfectly but not enough players are ready for the fact of what to do when your opponent misplays and that can be very different because a lot of pro players can get in their heads it actually might be harder i think a lot of pro players will actually admit this i know a lot of magic pro players have said this where it actually can be difficult to play against a lower skill player because you can't read them as much a pro player you know how their deck plays you know based on their sequence what their rough cards are in hand based on how they counter out what they have left how they're playing out their dawn you know how their sequence generally is but you don't know that off a lower skill player so it actually can test you more to play against these lower skill players that you can't read as well that you might not know their deck list to help you play around what the options are in the metagame because all it takes is one random card that you're not expecting in a stock list and all of a sudden you're blown out of this game and you don't know what to do right that one of 10 cost kaido that one of gravity blade like you know what i mean like it just takes that one option that you weren't ready for that you didn't practice against that you did not know how to play around and you just get blown out of the game so again i think honestly you need to do both because of the variance that you get on the sim it's actually highly educational but of course you need to be playing in paper as well so it's not just only play in paper only play in sim the sim is very important and you need 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 to be doing both which is what i wanted to make this video on today really get y'all to explore and push yourself out there if you're not on the sim if you're watching this video and and this channel as a primary paper paper player i'd highly recommend accessing it because heck it's super it's like a super easy program to run you can run it on your phone you could run it on a computer you could run it on your tablet 
get it out there, get playing, get practicing. And honestly, it's just going to be better for the health of the game. We need the sim and we need an online digital client to really get out there and practice for folks. And honestly, just instead of out getting going out there and getting a webcam and playing against your friends and webcam that only might have a limited amount of decks as well. The sim lets you just load up deck lists really easy with images. I mean, come on. In terms of accessibility, in terms of playability, in terms of just the, the amount of practice you can get, the sim is no joke. Get out there, support Batsu, and just really help this game grow. Play the rank sim.